Yo, yo, I'm Mixed Mars and Merman, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be working on my Titan Strimmer multi-tool. I've been down to my sister's house to cut a, a bit of grass for my, for my niece, who's having like a pre-prom party, I think. Uh, but they want to go in via, the, the, via the, the, the back entrance to the garden rather than coming through the house. And the council left a big verge all overgrown because they're saying they're leaving it for wildlife. But I just think the council just, just don't want to spend the money to get, get it all cut. So I took my lawnmower down there today and my strimmer up. Managed to get it all done, but my strimmer is playing about. It starts up relatively well, but the second you take, turn the choke off, it bogs down. You can run it on three quarter choke a little bit, but it's not running to, to its full RPM and capabilities. And as soon as you hit the trigger with the choke um, turned off, uh, it cuts straight out. So it's bogging down and uh, it's not getting the fuel it should do. So I'm guessing I've had this machine about three years now, I think, depending on my very first unboxing video I did of this. And this is the first time I've actually had to do anything with it. So after three years, that's not too bad, but uh, if people are experiencing problems after three years, they'd normally just throw this machine away and then go and buy another one or, or send it away to go and get it fixed. So I'm going to try and fix this myself. I did, I did a video about four years ago, three years ago, on how to fix it just by replacing a carburetor. But today I'm going to show you how to replace a gasket and diaphragm set, and that way rebuild a carburetor, hopefully get it up and running for a lot less than that. So that should be good. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mode and Man, then hit the subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I'll learn a video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. I'll take it out in the garden, show what it is doing, and hopefully try and get it fixed. Right, let's go out in the yard. So today we have a surprise guest turned up. Not for me, but one of Pip's mates. Where are they? I don't know where we are. Ah, oh, here he is. This is Huxley. This is uh, my boy, Ethan, one of my boys. This is his little dog, sit down. He's a bit of, he's a, bit of a bit of a playful pup, that's Huxley. He's about eight, eight months old. Little Labrador, golden Labrador, here he is. He's all right. He's good as gold, to be fair. And Pip absolutely loves having him around, so it's, uh, it's kept her busy for a couple of nights because Ethan's in the police force and he's been working um, strange shifts. So his uh, girlfriend's away in the Isle of Wight at the moment. He's working night, so I said, uh, we'll have him. We'll have him here. So that's what we're doing. Turn it on. Bit of choke. Prime it. Turn the choke off. And if you, even if you feather it, And it will run a bit better if you just sort of put the choke up slightly. Not a lot though. And that's your lot. Let's get up on the bench and try and get it fixed. Okay, so before we start working on this machine, you want to remove the HT up the top of your spark plug, just so we know that nothing can actually start on this machine, just, just for safety's sake. And the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to remove the, the air box cover. There's a screw just inside there. So I've used this quite, quite heavily, but it's not, not been used commercially. You know, just around the garden and helping friends out, bits and pieces there. So it's not been used excessively. But uh, first time in three years, it's actually needed something doing. That's not too bad. I want to grab myself a little tiny eight mil now. Um, if I want a tiny ratchet would do, a little ratchet with an extension bar on a little tiny 8mm socket. And just going to undo the, the two nuts that are actually supporting the air box and the carburetor on. Here's the air filter inside mine, that's fine. So a little tiny nut there. And on the left hand side, there's a little tiny spring washer. And then on the other side, which is the choke side, you'll find there's a washer and a spring. In fact, there's three. There's a, the nut, there's a small washer, a, a large washer and a spring. So that's all on this carb is well old. Now I should make some modifications of this a while back and I'll show the modifications shortly. So my fuel lines are not excessively excessively worn, which is good. I have tried to keep it indoors best where I can, but there has been occasions when it has been left outside, as you, as you know, you know, just working around the house and you leave, you leave in the garden, you leave, leave stuff out overnight and what have it. So it has happened, uh, but not recently. I'm gonna clamp my fuel lines off 
and then get myself a pair of long nose pliers. I just want to remove the, um, the fuel leads. There's one. And one at the back there. Just a bit fiddly just to get in there just to remove it. Excuse hands. Now if it doesn't come off, you might get a Stanley blade just inside there, just to give it a bit of a bit of a, um, a cut, and then just just cut it off level. Now if you can't get it off, just just pull it off, and then just retrieve the rest of it out the other side. So it's no drama. So we're going to go for the shortest one. Is going to be let's turn that grommet round a touch, so we know what's going on. It's going to be the one on the right is for one on the um, right, and one on the left, one on the left. That's easy enough to remember. That's, that's fine. Right, so now to remove the carby, uh, you can just slide this throttle plate forward, like so. So see how, see how that moves forward, just slide the throttle plate forward, and then grab hold of your throttle cable, and just lift that out, like so. And then the whole carby will remove away. Now what you might also have to do is just have to unscrew this, um, this little tiny throttle cable here, probably be an eight, eight or 10, I'm gonna get an eight and a 10 out. Let's try 10 first, yes and 8. And all we're going to do is just going to undo this one and take that off of the, um, of the actual carburetor itself. And by removing that, we'll completely free up the entire carb. Twist by hand now. There it goes. So now we can remove a carburetor in its entirety. So there's a carb, let's get up on the bench and try and get it cleaned. Right, so carburetor now up on the bench. Now before you um, go to muck about with this, you, you'll find on the back of a carb, it might be two, sometimes there's, only, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's one, the little tiny tuner just here. Okay, now you need to get yourself a set of specialist tuning tools okay and this one here i believe is the one with the hole in it so it's got a little tiny small hole there okay see that hole now i've got a, a, a plethora of tuning tools and, and they're all labeled which one they are. This, this is a pac-man that's a hex and the one right after is one with the hole in it not that one not that one's a half moon that's a square that could be it, that's the one there. So this is the actual tool for this, okay? Now, originally, I didn't actually have this tuner, this, this particular one, and that's the one that actually fits that. I'm gonna put it in there, lock in, there it goes, bomb, it's in. Okay, so I didn't actually have that, so what I did, I took the carburetor off a lot of, uh, last year, I think it was, and put it in the vise, and I just cut a very, very fine uh, flat head in there, okay, just so I can then tune it later on with a flat-headed driver. I just got a little tiny hacksaw and just cut right across there, Okay, just so you get enough just to tune it. So if you don't have these, just a little tiny hacksaw right across there and that'll get you, up, get, get you up and running. Okay, but you can buy the sets for around about 12 quid on eBay, something like that. Okay. Right, let's get into it. Let's have a look, see why this little carby is not doing what it should be doing. So there's four screws up the top end and that'll be your pump diaphragm, metering diaphragm, that'll all be in there. So I bought this brand new um, probably oh, three years ago now. That's, you know, a lot of times it's just been sat, sat in the shed. But I was using Aspen at times, but not all the time. Is that ringing me up? Oh, two seconds, my mum's ringing me up. Hold the line. Right, so just remove the four screws. That's what I've done. They're up here. That's what I've done whilst I've talked to my mum. Take out your primer bolt and take off your um, metering diaphragm. That's it in here. This is the one that's causing the problems, okay? Although it looks, it looks to be okay. Um, I think that's what's causing problems and take this part off here and there'll be a little tiny screen in here just there but that looks to be really really good as well so not many problems there everything seems to be as it should be so we're quite quite happy there not seeing no dirt so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this um, this little tiny metering diaphragm now there's a gasket underneath there as well so just go a bit careful we don't want to tear the gasket up and try and keep that all in one piece if we can. Here comes a diaphragm. It actually feels really, really good. 
But I'm taking that diaphragm off, and I've bought myself, as some of you will have seen in previous videos, a, a little gasket, a little diaphragm set here, which I got off of Amazon or eBay, one or the other. And in here, there will be, uh, so let's have a look at the old diaphragm. Diaphragm's got a bit of a raised nipple to it. See that, that raised bit just there? Yeah? Well, you want one exactly the same as that. So I'm gonna go through my little tiny box of many things here to try and find an identical one. Now you can just take this out. You take your one out, out of the car, but you find the one you want and then order it, okay? But I've got this set pretty much for a, for penny. So there you go, so that, that, that's identical, okay? So that one we're gonna get rid of. And then this one here would be on, would be on a new one. And it always goes with a nipple facing downhill. That goes on there like that. Now, if you're not sure, at this point, what you can do is you can just put it all back together and try that, okay? In fact, it goes that way around, Mick. It goes that way around, like so. There's two tiny locating tabs just down here. Like that. So that's how it sits. But I also want to get to some of these other components here, which potentially could be holding me up. So I'm getting GT85 cleaner, uh, not carburetor spray. And I'm just going to have a little tiny clean here. Spray some fluid in there. And then on the other side, just see this little tiny rocker. Just hold that rocker down, that little rock, rocking piece, just push that down and then spray through it again. And that fluid will run all the way through. And you'll see it coming out the other end of that fuel line. So good spray there. And anywhere where there's a hole, just start just to locate them and just clean them through. Now some will go through and some won't, because some will be like a, like a, like, like a little one-way valve. Okay, a good clean up there. I'm happy with that, and we can then relocate that back on to the carb. Now, if you've got anywhere else on here that you think, you think might be an issue, just have a little spray around, try and locate any dirt, but nine times out of 10, it is actually either that little tiny screen just there, that's one that plays up, it's full of dirt, and you can remove that screen as well. So it's full of dirt, take that screen out with a little tiny pick, Clean it all out and put it back nice and gently, and then you'll get your diaphragm and put your diaphragm back in there. That all looks good. That's all good, and it's going to replace the um, the four locating screws. Just go careful when you're putting it in, okay? Because you don't want to ruin that diaphragm you just put in there. So just gently, gently, gently. I'll look tiny bit of fuel hose to clean up in a minute as well. Push them in. Push that all down so it all seats. And all we're going to do is just going to do that up. There's four screws there to do. You can do them across map if you want to, so make sure you're pinning it all down together. Good. Last one. Now sometimes on these, all you need to do is, is just tune them. Just get a bit of a tune. Because sometimes with diaphragms, they, 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 um, they decide to sort of um, go a bit stiffer. And by tuning them sometimes, will actually um, get you out of a pickle too. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this screw off here. It's going to take this throttle out. I just want to make sure there's no dirt inside there, and that's all. That's all as, as free as can be. This is always the hardest one to get. Let's see, that, see who's got that, that tune. See, I'm the same. You can't even adjust, you can't even adjust the throttle on it. So, if you use a special tuner, I'm just taking that out. Just so that, that that will clear that screw. So they're trying to make it as anti-tamper as possible, so that you guys can't get in there. That's what they want. They don't want no one working inside. There's a bit of dirt inside there, which you would expect inside a carb. Over time, this is so really really good clean. Anywhere where you think there's dirt getting in. Just give it a really, really, really good clean. So I'm actually cleaning through the centre part of the throttle there. 
that's all good and that, make sure you put it back exactly the same way in which it came out and then just we're going to nip that screw up just to get that one started and then we're going to go on the other side and just start that one off once they're both screwed down we can then go and put that back on to a carb so don't forget what you want to do take it apart take the diaphragm out if that's what the problem is and then just have a look at the diaphragm find one on uh, on ebay or amazon it looks the same purchase that and then continue with your fix but i've got a big pack of them so quite happy with that so that's the carburetor all cleaned okay so carby time to go back on now remember what i said i had a couple of pipes here to put on and the one around the back was going to be for one around the back and one here we on the top so no problem if you're not sure the bigger one out of the two generally is your feed in so just just trace the pipes which has got the filter on the end of it and then just put that on, on the thicker pipe okay so to put this back on it's quite simple you just want to hook up your throttle first or to just get this bit started just get it started up once it's started we can then go around and just hook the carb in fact take it back off that was a bit silly of me I'll do it in a minute just, just put the carby on line it up and then hook up this this, this throttle linkage just so it's actually in place and we know we have no problems with that later on. Working with strimmers is never the easiest one to work with. Right, so uh, let's get this carburetor back on. So just slide it back on and just slide this, this throttle linkage in. I know you can't see a lot at the moment. Just bear with me guys, I'm just trying to get it fitted up. So just slide it into there, all the way down till it seats. It goes. I mean, just do up this little tiny threaded bit just here. Let's get that started. Once it's started, we're on a bit of a winner then. There's me eight mil spanner I had. That's a ten, Mr. Eight. Here it is. So just get that started off. That's starting to fast over right. That's in. So now we can just attach our throttle by just picking up with your long nose pliers, pick up your, your throttle cable. Now this will be beveled on one side of this of this throttle linkage here, but you'll have a bevel, so a slightly wider part. Let me just show you that. And that's the way it goes in. So uh, just here, uh, you'll see it's, it's beveled one side and it's sort of normal the other. See the difference? The bevel bit is goes like that at the back. So, so the cable, this cable comes in through and it sits inside like a, like a sleeve. If you put it another way, the cable will never fit. It'll be too, it'll be too, uh, too short. So just prepare along those pliers, grab hold of that cable and pull that arm back and then just manipulate this cable in place. You might as well get a flat driver just to straighten that bit up. And then once you've got it roughly in place, it just slides it in. Once it's hooked in, that's not gone in yet. Just give it a tiny flick and that goes in like that. That's perfect. So that's that bit done. I want to hook up the fuel lines now. I'm just going to disconnect one fuel line, which you want at the back. Uh, so the one at the back, I'm pretty sure is that one there. Well, yeah, I'm going to say that one there is that one there. Let me just give it a bit of a prime in a minute just to double check what's going on here. So I'm not, if you're not quite sure, you need to just find the one with the, the fuel line on it. And my fuel line is right there. That's my fuel, so that's my feed in fuel, which is the longer one. Okay, so I know for a fact that my feed in line is the thickest one, and that's going to be put back onto that thick one on that carby just there. And we're nearly getting ready for a new set of fuel lines, nearly, not quite there yet, though. I'm going to get another season out of these before we start needing new fuel lines. Let me just cut, tighten the edge up on that a bit. That's better. Otherwise, if your fuel lines aren't any good, then uh, you're gonna be not getting any fuel in, are you? Let's try and wiggle those on. They will go. Takes a bit of time. I 
and I can't say a lot, but I've got to get, I've got to get it on. Got to get it on. That's it. Well, now we go. The few ones are starting to go on now. Lovely. That's number one fuel line. The number two fuel line is the one that goes on to a return. Let's slide that all the way back in. And then put that one straight onto there. See if that'll prime. Yeah, it does. Fuel coming up this one, up the thick one, and return out the bottom. So we know we've got a priming carburetor now, which is lovely. Um, I've got to put a backing plate on next, <coughs> pardon me. Mr. Backing plate, it's got all my screws and bits and bobs in it. So we had a little tiny spring and a couple of washers, didn't we? So let's just put all that on there now. If ever you're not sure, before you make a start, as I always say in all my videos, or most of my videos, take a photograph first. Take a photograph if you're not sure. Like I'm not sure now. I'm pretty sure though. Let's stick all that on. I've got a couple of washers to put on. Come on, down again. Get on it. Nearly. Right, that's it. And I'll get my little tiny eight mils. I'm going to run them up to start them off first. And once you start them off, you can then uh, just get your little tiny socket in there just to do those up. Now this one on the left, you can be done up relatively tight because that's, that, that's actually holding the carburetor in place as well. But the one on the right, which has got your choke on it, that doesn't want really to be super duper tight because you're only compressing the spring. Well, that's that one holding place, so that choke is still a bit loose. I'm going to just nick that up just until it's well seated, until you can actually feel it's actually restricting that choke. A bit more, a bit more, perfect, okay. So that's choke on, choke off. Happy with that. I've got my air filter inside there, which is all good. That can go onto there now. And just want to get my Phillips screwdriver and just screw that all the way home. Make sure everything as it should be. In fact, I'll double check that throttle, which I haven't quite done up. <clears throat> one at the back here, remember one at the back? Just got to screw it all the way home. So that's, let me get it screwed up. It won't take me two seconds, I'll come back to you once I've done it. Right, so I believe we're done. Come on, Pip. Come on, Pippy, let's go. Where's Huxley gone? He's about here somewhere. Huxley's not really used to the old garden machinery. Hux! <whistles> How are you, buddy? There he is, old Mr. Blonde Boy. Right, good boy. Let's, um, let's see what we can't do with this now. So now it's had the diaphragm set put in, or a new diaphragm at least. Right, so new diaphragms, get your set up here. Okay, so new diaphragms, I've got two tuners, one for the idle and one for the, uh, the top rev, okay? I don't forget, I did adjust mine to take a, uh, a flat headed driver. Because the set I had only had about six. I think the new sets take about 12. So we're going to start it up and then uh, I might just tune it, okay? Let's, put, let's get a few pumps and we're going to choke it, start it. Off choke. So I want a bit of fuel. So I'm going to put it in the back here and tune that up.
just one quarter turn um, towards uh, clockwise. I've got my Titan trimmer working one more time. So there you go, one little Titan trimmer now all up and running. All I had to do was just adjust it with a flathead driver um, where I'd adapted the, the, the main jacks. Didn't actually have this one originally. Um, just had to twist it in, just make it leaner um, by about a quarter of a turn and it, and it liked it a lot, so that's good. Um, it now picks up, uh, revs lovely and uh, idles beautiful too. It starts a bit, bit easier too, that's nice. So yeah, I repaired that just because I had a, a stack full of these, which, which I buy a load of these all the time anyway. They're about, I don't know, about four, about six pound for about five, and they're about 12 pound for about 20, something like that. You can get big, big sort of bulk loads on. They all come from China. Um, but uh, if you find the right one you, you need, then just, then just re try and replace the uh, diaphragm if you can. That should get you up and running, but you may need to tune it. Just don't think, just by putting that in there, you, you're good to go. You might have to tune it, and you, what you're doing by screwing it in, you're making it leaner, and by screwing it out, you're giving it more fuel, making it richer, but there's a fine line of where it needs to be, and you need to either listen to the engine or use a taco, uh, taco machine to, to get it right. So hopefully that little video will get you up and running and streaming again in no time at all. And if it has helped you, then hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, send notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time when I upload another video. So I look forward to seeing the episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, guys, guys, much more importantly, take it easy.